Hello everybody, hope you're having a good holiday time, hope you had a lovely Christmas, and uh, I'm back again. Shock, horror, I know it's unbelievable for another video. I'm going to hopefully start doing these every couple of days for you guys who are, you know, still into Gwent and playing that regularly. And I'm just going to be, yeah, showing off some decks, I haven't really done too much of that. Anyway, uh, we can we can just jump right into this one. Going to be a bit of a Baruva deck, a bit of an elf uh, swarmy kind of thing. Uh, Baruva with the movement synergy as well. And actually pretty much net deck this, you know, part and parcel from the Artuza, Team Artuza website. Their meta snapshot has some cool decks on there. And I thought, I'd, you know, I haven't really tried to go tell much out, uh, you know, since Ithne and uh, Sahil and all the artifacts was a thing. So... Why not give this one a go? Uh, I've seen people play this against me, and it works pretty well. Has some really, really effective long round tools, especially. Um, and yeah, let's just look over the cards quickly, and then of course jump into gameplay after that. We do in fact have Bruva. He seems to be the kind of best Squirtel leader you could be running at this point. Ithne, not really cutting it, only four damage across the game. Uh, you know, Bruva of course giving six, uh, effectively just a better version of Ithne in, in pretty much... You know, almost all situations, of course, Ithne can manipulate the health a little bit easier, maybe, than Bruva, but you can still do that with Bruva. Either way, he's kind of the best Squirtel leader, and he has some really nice synergy as well with, with Vryhead Brigade. This card is uh, damaging an enemy by two whenever it's uh, moved, effectively. Uh, so this card can just be nuts. Of course, you can play it on the same turn as Bruva. If you manage to save all of your hero charges up and play it on the same turn as this, you're getting a ton of free points. So that's a really cool synergy there. Uh, and yeah, there's a little bit of extra synergy with stuff like maybe Shiru um, for Bruva, or of course, you know, your other removal pieces that can be, you know, aided by that little bit of extra damage that Bruva brings. So what else have we got? We've got Ithlin. Um, this is just boosting a unit in hand. You can put it onto Shiru if you want to line stuff up that way. Or it's just a good carryover mechanic, you know, get some free points, maybe you buff up something that you want to stay alive, like maybe your low health elves so that they, you know, can pop Aileron out, but just some solid value on that one, carryover value, which is pretty rare in, uh, in decks these days, so that's nice. We then have Shiru, and this card is synergizing really effectively with Call of the Forest, which effectively you destroy one of your elves, and then you get Shiru out of the deck, and he's 5 strength. Um, can be a bit awkward sometimes if you don't have an elf to pull out with Call of the Forest, but you know, this this does let you choose the target, so that's nice. And Shiru with five uh, strength can be pretty pretty devastating, especially when you have Bruva, maybe Ithlin, I guess not if you're playing Shiru with Call of the Forest, but you know, with the Bruva you can manipulate the enemy strength and of course get that massive Shiru off, hopefully in a long round, um, as well as you know, you've got other ways to line their units up to the right strength. Uh, so yeah, Shiro really effective, Call of the Forest, they're kind of working in tandem to yeah, really crush long rounds, and this deck is definitely favoured in long rounds I would say over most stuff, and yeah, not so good in shorter rounds, things like the big Woodland Spirit deck or Eridan might give you trouble uh, with this, but it should be it should be financed a lot of other stuff, um, yeah. And we've also got Aileron, of course. She's just kind of free five points, like a better roach in most cases. Also giving you a bit of elf synergy, which a lot of your cards uh, do thrive from. Uh, not literally thrive, but you know what I mean. They, they just improve. And Isangrimin is, is an example of that. He gets basically an extra point for every elf you have on the board or any elves that you play. Uh, so he it can be a huge amount of value in a long round. Again, showing the power of... of you know, the long round potential this deck has. Uh, Melane is just solid, solid removal, similar to Teruvial, both kind of just good value damage cards and elves. So, you know, you don't complain when they're good points for provisions and, you know, have the elf tag as well. Uh, we do also have Kiaran for the same reason, having the lock is pretty important against a lot of decks. Which is uh, still a staple, it seems like, in pretty much everything. They're just so good. There's not really much thinning in the game apart from them. So, yeah, we are running those and the Aileron and the Call of the Forest. All thinning cards, but Witches are definitely a strong include. Milva, she got nerfed, I believe, with the recent patch, but she is still a solid Squirtel unit, you know, able to get easily 7 value and, and beyond in a long round. Uh, Yaven is also just incredibly strong, able to deal a big amount of damage once you've got that big board of elves set up. He's kind of like the, the Swears of 
uh, of the elf archetype, I guess. Uh, although Swear's got nerfed, right? I'm pretty sure. Um, so maybe that's not a good comparison. But uh, then we have Sappers, which is, of course, dealing with your artifact decks, which I'm not sure how many there are, but there might be a couple uh, here and there able to delete that Sihil. If there are a lot of artifact decks, you could definitely add another Sapper in to help with that. And I do believe the Artuza deck on there was running that. So. I've decided to take it out because I think maybe we won't run into artifacts that often. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, we just have archers, bowmen for lining things up to the right strength, dealing damage to engines, you know, all the all the good stuff that the Skirtel Elf archetype can bring. And of course, Vanguard, which is just getting a huge amount of value early in the game and even potentially later, as long as you make it your first play in the round or at least an early play, buffing up for every elf in your hand. And then, of course, you have Dragoons and Neophytes, just good four for four elves which you know kind of have an effect right neophyte works a little bit better with all your elf stuff like the aileron the isengrim uh the yaven all that and the dragoon you know the the move effect can be pretty valuable in some situations so all in all kind of no dead weight cards pretty even spread of provisions not too many low provision cards and not too many high ones either but the sure finisher is definitely going to be uh you know allowing this deck to shine, I think, in a lot of matchups and a lot of games. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to check that out. And yeah, let's just jump into some gameplay, guys. All right, guys, time looks like it's going to be a full test. And we should have an OK matchup against full test, I believe. Um, we can kind of deal with a lot of their engines. So let's go for the, the mulligan of the Witcher, as we will always do. And probably hold on to the rest of the mulligans. We could search for the Issing Room, I guess, but... Eh, I'm not really too worried. I think we'll just time a nice pass if we can um, at some point here. Maybe start with the Milva, get that rolling. I think we do want to play that in this round. Sounds good. And then, of course, do our thinning, get our Aileron out and all that good good jazz that we always roll with. Um, and we'll see what the opponent goes with. Probably some engines and whatnot. Trebuchet, okay. Trebuchet is a card I probably shouldn't play in this row. My bad, guys, my bad. Um, I always forget that against the wonderful Northern Realms. Um, we don't have any move effects either, which is a bit of a bummer, I'm not going to lie. Usually, we're yeah, pretty happy to see one of those, but we can go with the Bowman, get some value there. Uh, tactical advantage, nah, we're okay for the moment. Going to be able to remove the Trebuchet, okay, that with this one at least, with the Archer. We can then remove the second one with the Bowman, but it does kind of suck a, in a big way having to... Uh, Having to use our removal, our pings on these engines rather than other stuff. Um, they're not really the highest priority, and I've yeah, playing into the range row was just a bit of a dumbo move, I suppose. We probably would have done it eventually with the bowman anyway, but maybe we lose a point or two as a result. Um, either way, okay, that is an arbalist, and we can go ahead and just remove the, uh, the trebuchet, I think, maybe buff. Uh, now, with that tactical advantage, try to keep some elves alive if we can uh, for the Yaven, for the uh, Aileron, of course, that will pop out the deck sooner or later. Um, interesting, we have Call of the Forest and Shiru in hand, so we don't need to use that combo. We can instead use Call of the Forest maybe on Isengrim or uh, something else, maybe Teruvia, to I guess, um, if we need that, or a lock if we're really needing a lock. Uh, and okay, looks like he's got Commando. I don't have an answer to that unless I want to use the Bruva Hoog ability, which I'm not really in the market for right now. Um, so I think probably just playing Witches is okay. Um, and then maybe we just take a pass after that. I'm a little bit scared of the Commandos, they're going to be really a bit of a worry with Pavetta plus Draug, but we've always got the Shuru, and that's kind of going to be what we fall back on to uh, hopefully win, win the game here. Uh, hopefully our long round will be stronger than theirs. Done. Banner does come down. All right, that's a fair amount of points. Uh, Arbalist, of course, proccing as well. Yada yada. Um, not the end of the world. We can go with Ithlin here if we want, just to buff the Shiru up. Um, it might be better to keep him at two strength, I think. Uh, maybe buff some other stuff. Maybe the Brigade or the Yaven. Um, I think we're probably safe to go with, with the Ithlin now. Ah, it could be a little bit risky, but yeah, I think we're I think we're going for it. Get a little bit of carryover value and all that that lovely, lovely stuff. And then we can probably take a pass after that, I believe. Um, 
I mean, if we have to, we can play a couple of cards here, like maybe just Call of the Forest, uh, Yaven, maybe something like that, to get the Aileron out. And yeah, uh, roll on with our life, but looks like he doesn't quite have enough points to take it, so I think we'll take a pass here. I mean, it's not the best. He's used not really that many good cards, a lot of bronzes. Um, no real finisher power cards, but yeah, I don't really want to stick around here and just get wasted by the, uh, the good cards he has left in hand. So we'll take a pass and, and hope. hope to recover, hope to be okay in the long round three that we expect, or maybe even round two. If he pushes us. God's blessed. And okay, Ike is his worst card apparently. Gonna pull Roach out, so fun times are coming in, I guess. Soon, maybe Ockvis will be pretty painful. Um, some other stuff he might have. Uh, we will see about that. Not much we can do at this point, just gotta grin and bear it, I guess. Uh, I actually don't think I'm gonna take a mulligan here. We definitely could. And it definitely might be the, the correct play to do that, but um, he didn't mulligan either, so he's just going to take the pass, yeah. Uh, ends up working pretty well for us, and I think we just play the archer here uh, to take the round. Nice valuable card, pretty much. And yeah, we can now mulligan that Ayla in a way, hopefully pull her out the deck. And yeah, we'll just see who has the better long round deck, pretty much. I'm hoping it's this one. Uh, of course, I'm hoping we win. We do have a little bit more removal in hand now, so that's good. Aileron, you're out. I'm sorry, but you've been bench. Sappers as well, not really going to cut it here. And I don't think we're too sad to get rid of the Neophyte either. Um, if we have to, with Call of the Forest, we can always pull them out anyway. That being said, I mean, they w they do synergize with Call pretty well, um, if we want to use them for that. So I don't even hate keeping them around. Um... I don't know, the, the Dragoons are probably worse than Neophytes right now. Then again, they can maybe move his stuff, so... Yeah, I mean... Okay, maybe we shouldn't have mulliganed that. Uh, but maybe worth taking the risk in case we've got one of our good cards, like a Syngrim or... Teruvial! Either way, we're just going to do the regular. Start with Vanguards. I mean, I can play them on range now, I guess. There's not really uh, any more of those trebuchets to worry about. So that's good. Um, just going to get those big boys out. Uh, might be a little bit awkward, we're assuming he'll damage my dudes, right? Uh, and that way we'll... I think we just remove this guy pretty much every time. With Melane, sounds good to me. Yes, okay, maybe not worth it. We lose a little bit of value on the Vanguard. Um, maybe a bit questionable, but I think it's alright. Okay, Kedwini Revenant as well is uh, <laughs> kind of a scary one. Let's just hope it doesn't copy itself. If it does, well, boohoo. That is a shame. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be a sad boy, but got Kiara and got uh, other stuff to do stuff with. Uh, other stuff to do stuff with. Wow, the commentary is insane this game. It's just so strong. Um, either way, we're 15 points ahead right now, so that's that's pretty good. And he does have to deal 3 damage to actually enable the, uh, the Spectre there, which it looks like he doesn't have. Um, how do we want to deal with the Botchling? And the Revenant here. I think we just go ahead and lock the Botchling, actually. Um, ah, it feels a little bit committal using the lock. That's my only issue. We might just get a little bit blown out. Um, I mean, the only thing we're really worried about is the Corvo, the Visor go to of Corvo, and we can move that with Dragoon. I guess if he has Avalak, then we might be in trouble. Avalak plus Corvo, but yeah, we'll see about that. Um, at the same time, we can maybe use the Avon or Shiru to to deal with that stuff, or even Teruvial, I mean, Teruvial's not really doing much damage, but you know what I mean. Um, we'll see how it goes. I mean, sure, we might end up getting blocked here, actually, which is a bit awkward, because he's you know, damaging my guys. Um, and he does manage to copy the Spectre there, which is a bit of a bummer. That is definitely not what I was hoping to see. Um, uh, now I think we just destroy that Revenant, probably. I think it is worth doing. Uh, we'll see if he has Draug. Draug would be kind of uh, difficult to deal with, maybe, depending on how many humans he can get. He also does have the three full test charges, which I assume are going to uh, bring online some pretty scary cards. We haven't seen too much in the way of power plays from him this game, so probably saving that Selkirk, uh, Sesenthesis, all that stuff to kind of wreck us with um, later. 
Not going to be too much fun. We really need to get Aileron out as well. Just guarantee those extra points. Maybe with the Dragoon. Uh, next turn. Let's see if we can make that work. And I'm not really sure where our Shuru value is, is coming yeah. from. Okay, maybe from Naneke. Uh, maybe from some stuff that he boosts up here. We'll have to see. It's going to be a bit awkward. Sometimes, yeah, you want to use the Bruva on the Shuru. Um, and not the Brigade, which is a bit weird. A bit counterintuitive, but... Uh, trust me, it makes sense. In some way. <laughs> somehow, I'm sure. Uh, and he's just going to try to stop, you know, his guys from being lined up. Uh, which makes a lot of sense. It really does. Uh, either way, who would this? We should probably be moving them all onto the same row, actually, in case we want to play the Teruvial for big damage, but tiny thing. We're probably going to play the uh, the Isengrim anyway with the Call of the Forest, so not really too big of an issue. And yeah, we're going to just see if he has the points to cut it here. He does need some quite good cards. Uh, Arkvist is not bad. Selkirk's pretty good as well. Um, it'd be pretty clutch if he actually didn't kill the 6 here and he killed the 7 instead. Or the 5, I suppose. But if he killed the 6, I think we'd be kind of in trouble here. Um, as it stands, he doesn't do that. So, hmm, interesting. We can actually play Isengrim now, and I think we're going to do that. It's not the biggest value play ever, but we're going to be able to buff our guys out of that 6-point range. Um, and that'll be really cool, I think, just to yeah, allow us no uh, to play that Shiru maybe next turn. Uh, it will be especially good if he plays another six-point guy. Um, he could definitely uh, mess with my removal by buffing his stuff up, so we'll see if, if he goes for that now that we've shown him Call of the Forest. Um, that might have been a bit dodgy from us, and honestly, if we don't find the Shiru value, that's kind of how we're losing. Um, but I'm sure we'll, we'll see it in some... Uh, in some way in this round all his guys you know are vi vulnerable right now sixes and fours so yeah one of those options we might have to take it a bit sooner than we would like to but sometimes you got to do things you don't want to do in life that is just the way of it so synthesis does come out and he can definitely uh mess with the shiru here a little bit um, he is in fact going to double buff the Sysenthesis to get it out of range of the Shiru. That's really smart play from him. And actually this kind of fucks us up. Might have been correct to uh, yeah, take the Shiru a little bit earlier there. Um, in truth. But we'll see how it goes. We can uh, we can still wait a turn on the Shiru I think. Just play this out. Um, that's not really going to do a great deal to be quite honest guys. Um, and yeah I mean sure we'll just pass. We do have three Brewer Charges, so we're not out yet, but if we don't find any Shiru value at all, then, then we're going to have trouble winning this game, I think. Uh, especially if something like Orkvist is coming down um, now. I think Orkvist is five points, for, if I'm not mistaken. Point for me. This is probably the biggest weakness of this deck, is just sometimes it doesn't really... Uh, you know, it can't set up that Shiru, it can't align the Shiru if you know they play really, really well. Um, and it looks like this might be one of those situations. So, it looks like the biggest Shiru we can even get is... I mean, we could get a 4 if we get a lucky hit. Um, I think we're going to risk it, because we kind of need to at this point. Um, so, we, yeah, we get a 4. And we can then move the Selkirk down to 4 range as well. And then take the Shiru value. So, all in all, that could have definitely been a lot worse, actually. It's not the end of the world. Kind of a shame that we hit the Vess with the damage. Um, otherwise, our Shuru would have been a little bit, little bit bigger. Uh, but we'll see if this is enough. Pretty hard, far ahead in points. He does have nine hidden points right now, so he needs a pretty, you know, reasonable-sized bomb at the end to take us out. Um, we'll see if he's got it. Gonna have to be, yeah, eleven Battles points. Um, okay, Sabrina, that's pretty good, my dude. Um, but it's not quite enough. Uh, I mean, like, you gotta hand it to this guy. He he played well, and he almost got there, but we just have a bit too many long round tools and a lot of good cards in hand there to take it. So, uh, yeah, I hope that showcased this deck. Maybe I didn't play it perfectly, um, but that's a pretty fun and viable score tell option for you guys if you're wondering what to play on the ladder. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in a couple of days.